My name is Greg Evans. I work for USDA APHIS, the Animal Plant Health Inspection Service in Beltsville, Maryland. I'm responsible for the identification of scale insects and white flies primarily. Well, today we're going to be talking about mealybug identification. Currently, there are over 2,200 species of mealybugs, making it the second largest family of scale insects, of which 309 species, or 14%, occur in the United States. They are the most important, some of the most important pests of fruit, ornamental, and agronomic crops. You can find them on fruits, stems, leaves, and even on roots. They damage plants by sucking plant juices, and they also produce honeydew that leads to the formation of sooty mold. Some species also inject toxins that cause leaf dwarf deformation. They become economic pests when their population explodes, and they can weaken and even kill plants or render them unmarketable. This is an example of a, a hedge of hibiscus before and after the pink hibiscus mealybug attacked it. Their population often explodes when they are separated from their natural enemies, other as an invasive species or by the use of non-selective pesticides. That's why it's important to identify them, to stop them from entering the country and becoming pests, or also, to, if they're already here, to better control them. So how do we identify mealybugs? First, you need to have the identifiable stage present. Mealybugs are only identified to the level of species if you have the adult female. So in this group, of, if you have this group of uh, specimens, you would go for the largest one in the bunch. But you can't really ignore the others either because these may be smaller adults or you may also have multiple species. You also need to have to be able to see the characters. Mealybugs, uh, the taxonomy is based on a lot of these ducts and pores all along the body, and so you need a good slide mount of specimens to see them. You need to clear the internal contents, and you have, a have to have a decent microscope to see them, at least with good resolution at 400x power. You also need to understand the important characters used in identifying mealybugs. You understand those characters by getting taxonomic keys and other aids to help distinguish them such as the Millie Books of Southern Asia, where you find keys and, and illustrations of all the species, and you get to know how the taxonomist views the group and the most important characters. Mealybugs, the females of mealybugs go through five stages, the egg stage, three nymphal stage, and then the, the adult female, which is wingless. Males go through an additional stage, and they, they have one pair of wings as an adult. Adult female mealybugs, you can tell them by the vulva, which is this area down here on the venter around the uh, seventh abdominal segment. It's the most reliable way of telling that you have an adult, but other characters that are often useful are the presence of multilocular pores, which are only found in adults, and translucent pores, also only found in adults. However, they're not found in all mealybugs, adult species. Also, the antennae aren't developed completely in immature stages. A species that normally would have an eight-segment or nine-segment antennae may, may only have a six- or seven-segment an antenna in the, in the uh, immature stages. These are some of the translucent pores. You find them only on the hind legs of adult female uh, mealybugs. This is the vulva down in this area. characters used to distinguish mealybugs from other scale insects. There is no single character that, are found, that is found in all mealybugs that will distinguish it from other families. However, almost all the mealybugs, and the, certainly the most common ones, will have osteals. There will be a, a pair on the anterior, on the, on the head area up here just above the mouth parts, and also another pair down here on the dorsum along the uh, sixth segment of the ab abdomen. They also have a circulus in, in many of the species, which is on the venter side uh, around the third or fourth abdominal segment. Another important character in mealybugs are the serrari that you find along the lateral margin of the mealybug.
These are unique to me mealybugs. Uh, the translucent pores on the hind legs are unique to mealybugs, except that they're also found in some area coxes as well. And trilocular pores, the very small pores, they're, they're unique to mealybugs. They're often confused with margarotids and orthesids because they're similar in shape. But these, these groups have abdominal spiracles along the posterior margin. Going over some of the morphology, the antennae are, are numbered, counted from the base, one up to segment nine. The antennae aren't used very much as far as distinguishing genera and species other than the number of segments. We also have a series of pore, different types of pores. These are discoidal pores. They're small and round. And they don't have any other divisions within within the circle. They're not used very much in, in uh, mealybug taxonomy, except for the ones that are around the eye, whether these occur around the eye or if they're on a sclerotized rim around the eye, become significant in the key to some of the genera. Translucent pores on the hind legs, these are very tiny, minute, uh, d roundish dots that you find on different segments of the legs, on the hind legs. They're very important as far as uh, species differentiation. Trilocular pores are three loculars, such as this. And they're not used very much in mealybug taxonomy, except for their presence around these conical CD, which indicate uh, where the sorari are. And the sorari are very important characters in mealybug taxonomy. Kinkalocular pores or uh, have five loculus, and they look sort of more. They sort of look like a sheriff's badge when you see them. I look for them most commonly underneath the mouth parts here on the venter. You find them in Phenococcus and some of their relatives in Puto, and there it's a presence or absence thing. They're, you know, you don't usually count these. It's it's whether they're present or absent that's important. Multilocular pores are very important in, in species differentiation. These have multiloculars, uh, more than five uh, loculars, and they occur usually uh, around the vulva, at least around the vulva. Sometimes they go farther up the abdomen. And in some genera, you also find them on the dorsum. So Rari, as I mentioned, they are very, very important in distinguishing genera and the number of these serrari, if they only occur on the abdomen or if they go all the way up the thorax and head, is an important character. Also important are the ducts. There are two main kinds of ducts, oral rim ducts, which is a sclerotized tube. If you focus up and down, you can see that these are tu tubular. And the oral rim ducts have a washer-like uh, rim around them, whereas an or oral collar ducts uh, are just the orifice and the tube. You don't have the rim around them. Or rim ducts are very important in distinguishing genera, and their distribution is important in distinguishing certain species. So if you find a mealybug on one of your plants, you have to decide what it is. The first thing I do is I start to gather evidence. I ask, uh, where is it from? And what, what, uh, where was the scale collected and on what host? This allows me to go to ScaleNet, which is an online database of all the world's literature on scale insects that you can search by a uh, number of different parameters, one included country or region, or host plant, genus, species, or even family. This will help me narrow down uh, the species that have been recorded on that, from that country or from that host. It also tells you which key you need to, to identify the, the, the mealybugs. Whether if it's a neotropical species, you would go to the, the book that deals with those types of mealybugs or uh, Asian species. This is Dismacoccus brevipes, the pineapple mealybug. If you find a, a mealybug on pineapple, most likely it's going to be this species. Uh, this is the coconut mealybug, Nipococcus nippi. 
Okay? The identification process is often a process of filtering out what it isn't and narrowing down what it is. Of the 2,224 species of known mealybugs, there's only 30 or 40 that are fairly common and perhaps 15 or so that are very common are cosmopolitan. This, that will help you and the host and distribution information is also very important to help you narrow things down. Understanding some of the important characters and having the right keys will help you place it to genus so you can then query square, uh, scale net and for, for example query all the Dismacaca species that are found on pineapple. Now we're going to go through a short key of the common mealybugs to show you some of the characters used. And the first part of the key says dorsum with only one pair of sorari. These are down on the anal lobes down here at the posterior end. They also, this genus also has very elongate and large ducts with a sclerotized, large sclerotized rim around them with CD coming out of the rim and also the tiny, tiny pores. This, this type of pore is unique to Phariseia and once you see that along with the only uh, pairs of Sorari down here, you pretty much know that you have a Phariseia. This is called the striped mealybug, uh, as you, the common name as you can see it has these, these stripes up and down the dorsum. Okay, so if it has Sorari other than just the anal lobe, you go to the next part of the couplet and this one has uh, five, usually about five Sorari all along the abdominal margin down here. Most of the common mealybugs will ha also have Sorari all the way up the margin, all the way up to the head, which will be 17 or 18 pairs. Um, these also have nine segmented antennae and oral rims distributed all over the dorsum. So with this combination of characters uh, that will lead you to this genus Machinococcus hirsutus, which is the pink hibiscus mealybug. Along with that it also has an anal bar down here at the bottom. So now we're going to talk about the ones that have 17 or 18 pairs of sorari that go all the way up to the head. And the oral rims are present or absent but if they're present, they're not distributed in, in rows all across the segments as in Machinococcus. Phenococcus has, normally has nine segmented antennae. There are species that have eight, but most of them will have nine. They also have 18 pairs of sorari. The dorsal seed are a very short and spindle shape. And they have this, these kinkolocular pores or five locular pores usually down in this region, uh, at least in this region underneath the mouth parts. Their claws have a claw denticle, which is this little tooth that's on the claw, on all three uh, pairs of legs. And that combination of character pretty much defines phenococcus. When you get down to the species case of this, you find that these have dorsal multilocularis on the dorsum as well as on the venter. And they have the sororant city in this area along the midline, which is very unusual. And with that combination of characters, it's pretty much certain that you have Phenococcus madurensis. These are species that have less than nine segments, usually eight uh, antennal segments. They don't have kinkilocular pores. And, and they normally have 17 or 18 pairs of sorari. Um, most of these uh, will have, in this couplet, will have auxiliary CD around the sororis. Normally a sororis will have a pair of conical CD and some trilocular pores around it. But when they have auxiliary CD, they also have these flagellate CD within this cluster of trilocular pores, such as you see here. Along with auxiliary CD, Pseudococcus also has oral rim ducts that you can see along here. These are oral rim ducts and they have this, this shape. That will distinguish it from the other genus that has auxiliary CD as well, Dismacoccus, but these don't have oral rim ducts. 
So again, it's a combination of characters that defines the genus. Now we go on to Planococcus. These are, this is a genus that has 18 pairs of serrari, and they don't have oral rim ducts. They have a very distinct anal bar, and that the translucent pores on the hindcoxy aren't very conspicuous. An easy way of telling whether you have 17 or 18 pairs of serrari uh, without counting all of them along the margin is that you can go to the position of the eye, the level of the eye, and then count how many are between the eye and the top of the head. If it has 18 pairs of serrari, normally you, you, uh, you'd have three pairs of CD above the eye. If it has 17, you'd only have two. So these, these have three pairs of CD, three pairs of serrari above the eye in Planococcus. The other genus, Paracoccus, has only 18, has uh, 17, I'm sorry. And they also, they, these have oral rim ducts, whereas Planococcus don't. They have an anal bar like Planococcus, but the distinguishing factor is that they only have 17 pairs of serrari, and they have oral rim ducts, whereas Planococcus doesn't. The translucent pores on the hindcoxy are very distinct and, and conspicuous. This is the Paracoccus marginatus, the papaya mealybug. These are some important references. Scale net is it's essential if you're going to be identifying whiteflies to access that website. And different regional works, mealybugs of Southern Asia, of Central and South America, uh, the systematic analysis of the Pseudococcus maritimus complex, and uh, Northeastern America, and one's the uh, Williams and Watson scale insects of tropical South Pacific region. All those will have keys and will help you identify. I would like to recognize the collaborators of this project. And are there any questions? How do you identify mealybugs in the field? Well, for people who uh, work a lot in the field and know their crops, uh, a lot of them have Come, become familiar with what they look like in the field, you know, whether by their uh, wax distribution or their color. But uh, for something like uh, the pineapple mealybug, which uh, is on is, is the species that you find on pineapple maybe 90% or more of the time, you may confuse it with uh, another species uh, in the same genus, uh, Dismococcus neobrevipes. Uh, and unless you get it on a slide, you wouldn't be able to tell that. When they... Um, Another example is with the pink hibiscus mealybug. When they first started surveying for that, when it came to Florida, a lot of the, the, the survey team were collecting this other pink mealybug that looked much like it, a hypogeococcus pungens, which are uh, very, they're very similar in color, but they're very distinct once you get them on a microscope slide. How you tell an adult female mealybug from an immature? Uh, the best way to tell an adult female um, mealybug from an immature is by, by the vulva. It's a, little stru it's a structure on the seventh abdominal segment on the venter, and if it has that, it's definitely an adult female. Uh, other characters are uh, whether or not it has multilocular ducts or translucent pores on the hind legs, but there are mealybugs that don't have those structures even as adults, so it's not as an, a reliable character even though for most mealybugs, you, you'll find that it, uh, it will work. What do circulars do, and um, are they diagnostic in mealybug identification? The circulus is a structure on, between the third and fourth uh, abdominal segment on the venter. People uh, think that it's an uh, adhesive structure that helps keep the mealybug uh, on the leaf or plant. They're not very diagnostic. Uh, because they're very plastic and they move around in the mounting process, but sometimes their shape uh, can be, whether they're yolk-shaped or, or uh, round or square.